about what happened in this scrimmage uh, that we think we can believe happened in this scrimmage uh, stood out to you? Well, I mean, the, you know, again, the big, the, the key thing to remember here is we see 95% of the practice. That is correct. This isn't, this isn't like, it's not like we're going to see practices and then they're going to go scrimmage and it's going to be something completely different. Correct. Um, so, yeah, I mean, no, this basically was confirmation of the things we've seen in practice. I mean, you know, the guys that are, that, and, and, you know, I felt kind of weird reporting about the scrimmage and talking about some of the, the players who had the best days because it was mostly young guys because they didn't put a lot of the older guys out there for a whole lot. So you didn't get to hear a lot about Trey Benson and, and Johnny Wilson and, and, Jer- and Fabian Lovett and Jared Verse. And, and I think with, uh, you know, Jordan Travis didn't play at all. So, right. So it, it's kind of a, it's kind of a little bit of a skewed um, report because it's so focused on the young guys because that's where they were really focusing in, in terms of giving the most reps. That's a good sign. I mean, again, it speaks to, you've got a lot of good, really impressive young players. Um, but you know, I, I think the names are going to be a little bit different probably when the season opens um, in you know five months. So every time we do go out there and the coaches have talked about this, so it's not like we're giving away trade secrets here. Uh, but uh, Jacobs, Dre Jacobs just continues to be uh, the, a, a star, uh, especially for a, a kid. You know, he's just a freshman and he looks like he's hit the ground running and it sounds like he had another good day on Saturday. So, it's kind of nuts, but, you know, it's not unheard of when you recruit well. If you recruit a good player, oftentimes they can come in at certain positions and have an impact. Are you starting to believe that that kid's going to get serious run when the season starts? Yeah, I definitely think so. I mean, I, you know, there's no reason to, to think he won't. And, you know, you go back to, you know, every coaching staff that we've ever covered and every coaching staff in America, we just don't talk to them. Um, you know, they always talk about how, you know, the, the, further away, the further away you are from the ball, it's a snap the easier it is to play. So, you know, wide receivers are usually going to be the easiest position to play on offense because there's not as much demanded of you. And this kid is really talented. Uh, as Mike Norvell said on Saturday, the stage is not too big for him. And uh, and he's really talented. You know, the other day, Kez McCorvey, uh, mm-hmm. first of ours, all-time great, was at practice. And I asked him, well, you know, we can tell Vandrevius Jacobs is really good, but, like, what is it about him? And he said, and Kez is like, man, he's got great footwork um, and, and body control. He said, you know, he, he reminds you of those great old-time slot receivers, you know, just shifty and great, great footwork. And, and, uh, and he, doesn't, he doesn't seem to ever drop the ball that we see. So, yeah, man, he's, he's a talent. There's, it's, there, to me, it's not really about waiting to see if he can pass the next hurdle. Now, the, the more we see a practice as he elevates the depth chart, he'll be going up against, you know, more consistently the top corners, but he's been going up against good corners and making plays. So, uh, yeah, I don't have any doubt he's going to be in the receiver rotation as well. I think uh, he's a special talent. I think, you know, the guys that played this weekend, the guys that made plays this weekend, I think you're going to see them make plays on Saturdays. Rodney Hill, mm-hmm. um, you know, Vandravius Jacobs, uh, Patrick Payton, obviously. And, um, you know, it's, 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 you know, I think there, there's, it's really positive that those guys are playing well knowing that they, there's some more experienced players that are going to play well, too. You know, I think the next big thing to look at, you mentioned it before, Jordan Travis did not play. So we had second, third, fourth string quarterbacks out there. But, man, I, I have got to tell myself to calm down. But I just like everything I see from Brock Lynn. And the fact that he got mentioned is looking uh, maybe, maybe well ahead of where he's supposed to be already doesn't surprise me. Uh, that that they may have hit on something there, Ira. This kid, I think, is better than we could have had a right to expect for a true freshman in his first camp. Yeah, I think it goes back to speaking to their evaluation as recruiters. And again, I I, I bring this up all the time because I'm always impressed by it. But you know, they there was a reason they didn't go after some other quarterbacks last year. They really liked Brock Lynn, and even when he committed to Ohio State, they were you know, look, man, they let another quarterback commitment leave yes you know the chris parson kid was committed to florida state and they let him leave because they wanted to recruit brock glenn they liked him and so and they told the other kid look we're going after brock glenn if you don't want to be here you don't have to be here but we're going to go after brock glenn and to the point where it looked like they were going to strike out on both of them because glenn then parson decommits glenn commits to ohio state but they stayed on him and they got him and they believe in him and i and i go back to that first the tour of duty that we we were out to watch a practice that tour of duty. Yeah. You could see it there. The way he walked around, the way he carried himself, the way he competed in those drills was a sign that, you know, that that's kind of, he's got a different makeup than a typical high school senior 
trying to be an early enrollee. He's not just kind of getting his feet wet, and he's carried it over to these practices. Um, so, yeah, man, I think they, they've definitely hit one there. The good news is I think Duffy's gotten a lot better and Tate's Tate. So um, it sets up a really good competition down the road. But, but uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's definitely been impressive. That's going to be a fierce competition. I really think that it's all wide open still uh, in terms of, you know, the, who's going to be the, the guy that's settled in there as the second string quarterback. You wouldn't expect a true freshman to get that role. But I think that battle between he and Duffy and as to who has the more promising future and Duffy can push Tate because, you know, Tate's Tate, that there's good to that and there's bad to that. So you just don't know how that's going to play out, but it'll be a fun competition to document. I know that every time they practice, whether we see it or not, there's usually glowing praise for the lines of scrimmage. And that too is what separates this team and why we have sky high expectations going into next year from the others that we've covered recently. It sounds like both the offensive line and defensive line won their fair share of battles. And once again, the depth of those two units really stood out. Yeah. And I think the, you know, the defensive line, I think got the best of it, but, but, you know, I think there's, there's the exciting thing about that is again, you're not relying just on Fabian Lovett and just on right. uh, Jared verse. I mean, you know, again, Patrick Payton and, you know, we saw, we've been seeing it at practice, but, sounds like it really was evident again on Saturday. It's not just the fact that he can get after the quarterback, but he's trying to challenge physically uh, using his power uh, and trying to challenge and setting the edge and being more of a force and run support. And that's exciting, man, because that's not what he did last year. And so he's taking that next step. Um, And I think, you know, you add in the Daryl Jackson's and some of these guys on the defensive line, that group uh, is getting really, uh, you know, much more impressive. The offensive line, I think I still have super confident in. I think it's going to be a great group over the course of the year. But, you know, there's more moving parts there in terms of like guys, not everybody fully participating and then moving guys around. Um, but I, yeah, man, the lines of scrimmage are, are continue to be a positive. And, you know, I, and the things that, you know, Alex Atkins and Mike Norvell were not happy with some of the holding calls and, and some of the penalties, penalties they had. But that's not about ability. I think it's more about technique and fundamentals. And I think we've seen Alex Atkins can fix all that. 